If you're anything like me, you've got a bunch of data that you need to store and back up to keep safe, just in case. Well, I already have one Synology 8-Bay, but the best practice for backing up your data is a 3-2-1 method. That's three copies of your data on two physical medias, so that would be two individual hard drives, or on two separate units, and one off-site. Well, currently I've got uh, three, and I have an old janky two, but this guy is wearing it out. So I bought a second Synology, and we're going to be setting up and backing up data today. All right, and now to rewind time, we're going to open up the box and take a look at the DS1821 Plus and set it all up. Opening up the box, you are greeted with this. So it's got a little box with your accessories, so power cables and stuff like that. And this nice foam to protect the unit. So just pull it out. And there it is. And right here is the brand new NAS. It looks just like the old one, but we're gonna go over it and get some features set up inside of it. I've even got another 10 gig um, RJ45 port for it because just regular Ethernet speeds are not enough. Okay, and here is the little uh, PCI 10 gig adapter. So I did do a previous video where I installed one of these in my other one, and so it's going to follow much the same steps. To get at the inside of the NAS, we do have to unscrew one, two, three, four screws. Apologize, it's more than those four, it's also these two at the top. Once the four screws are off, the top will just slide off. It's a little hard to do one-handed, so I'm going to put it down. Now, once you're in here, you get a good look at the device. Right there is the PCI, and this would also be the opportunity if you want to replace your back fans. You need to unscrew all these screws. Um, I think these ones on the insides are for the fans themselves and the outermost ones are for this bracket and then would slide off and you could swap out those fans. Install, you just line it up with the proper part of the PCI socket, making sure it's lining up on the outside. It's a little bit tricky to do one-handed but you get a line up and then you push it straight down. When lining it up, pay special attention to that there's a little socket right down in the bottom and that makes it a little bit easier. I didn't notice that at first. Push it straight down and boom, it's in. Perfectisios. Okay, to reinstall it, uh, this one was a little bit trickier than the old one. I needed to make sure to line up this front with, um, it's got a little ridge on it. So when you would slide more or less just uh, almost straight down, so slide back, and then there's this little bridge that is right there, and you need to line up this sliding panel with that, otherwise it's not going to stay there. It comes down, and then you can slide it forward, and then it's all set. I haven't installed any drives yet, so I'm not too worried about being rougher with it. And there it is, back installed. If you are wondering, this is going to become a backup of my DS1819 Plus. If you're wondering why I'm not using the newest one uh, to back up everything, it's that I don't want to take the risk of transferring all the drives to the new one and having it something corrupted when the current one is doing just fine for me. And what I really need is just a backup of that. And as to why I didn't create uh, my own personal NAS. It's that I have a variety of different hard drive sizes uh, as I need more space. So I just like the Synology hybrid RAID system. And it's fundamentally similar to what I had in the Robo where I just had a bunch of different drives. I actually got to the point where I had labeled them so I could keep track of what I had installed in here. So that's why I'm doing that. Pardon the mess on the top. I haven't gotten a chance to clean it up. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is vibrations. So since it's going to be living next to my old one, vibrations can transmit through the table. This was a concern with my other arrays down here. So now you might be asking yourself, sorry for the change in lighting, how did I deal with the vibrations? Well, 
I had rubber and foam pads and I just put it under the feet and that took care of that. I'm going to do something similar up here with this one. And this will largely prevent the vibrations from going through. So it does have tiny little, tiny little, little rubber feet on the bottom. And again, pardon the mess, over here I have these foam and rubber uh, pads. They're actually used for like washers and dryers to prevent tri tri vib vibrations from transmitting through like your floors. But they do the job and they just dampen out more vibrations so that it doesn't transmit as easily from one bay to the next. And just like that, we got some extra dampening down there. These ones are rubber with cork in the middle, unlike the rubber. The rubber and foam one is moving down to this five bay, um, just USB, so it's uh, five individual drives. It's not a rate box. So if you're wondering how I kind of secure my devices, make sure I don't lose data if there's a power outage, well, the two NASs, uh, I have a new switch that is in up another upcoming video. Um, my modem, as well as the router up there. Well, I have two ups, so that's uninterrupted power supplies, one and two. I do apologize for the mess. And one of them is for the internet stuff, and the other one is for the NAS. And that way, if there's a power outage, I have everything I need for several hours. An important note that I don't want to forget, just in case it comes along later, when you're transferring these drives out of a Drobo, so if you have this analogy, you don't need to worry about it as much. You do need to check compatibility. But for me, when I transfer these drives out of the Drobo, right now it has data on it. When I put it in this, it's going to be reformatted. So all the data on these drives will be lost. So during this time, I will only have a one primary backup of my data. And so the data is more at risk. So need to pay special attention to what the drives are doing. All right, now we're going to install a drive into here. First thing you need to do is take off the brackets, sorry, the sleds that go in the NAS. So you just take off the two sides, as simple as that. Put the hard drive in, making sure to line it up. So fairly carefully. And then you just simply pop the sleds back on, laying it on completely toolless, more or less simple. A key thing to note is to make sure the drive is fully seated in the back. Um, some people have noted that they're, they experience a vibration noise with hard drives. Personally, I haven't, but you can add a little bit of Velcro or thin uh, like foam padding to the edges of the sleds uh, to help with that. Now I just got to do that eight more times. And if you're wondering how noisy these drives are in an array, I'm going to put the microphone right next to each of the drives, and then I'm going to have it back about two or three inches. Okay, this is what the dashboard looks like. You can see the type of RAID I have, two fault tolerance, the hard drives uh, in the RAID, and uh, right now it's optimizing the background because it's currently running a uh, data scrubbing, even though this is a brand new RAID, but in this same area, you would also see how long it takes for it to create your RAID array. My array took around two days, and then you can see the storage pool, can be scheduled later, run every time period. You can set up all that kind of scheduling whenever you'd like. You can go into hot spare, so that would leave one hard drive free as opposed to having them all in the array at once. So when one hard drive goes, it immediately starts recovering right away. I don't have that set up. I have all bays and all hard drives uh, populated to run at once. So there are advantages and disadvantages to both. You got the SSD caching if you have an SSD installed in the NAS and you can set up your global settings if you'd like in that menu. In here, you also have encryption, so you can set up your encryption keys, how you want the RAID sync. Uh, I would set it up, honestly, for syncing faster, even though it impacts uh, overall performance, uh, because realistically, you want that to resync as fast as possible. You want to be using your RAID array as little as possible when it's resyncing. 
And in here you can see your listed hard drives. And then you come over here to overview and it tells you how much storage you have, how much you're using, that kind of details. And then you have your different hard drives listed and their uh, storage quantities in here. You can also select um, Uh, check out the smart details where it tells you the life of the hard drives, how well they're doing, and you can set up other tasks. That's the smart, other quick test or extended test, how frequently you want it to run, uh, monthly, bi-monthly, triple monthly, yearly, that kind of thing. Note the extended test with larger hard drives does take a long time. So you need to make sure that the NAS is going to be up for a long uptime if you're going to do a extended test. Okay, when you're logging into Synology NAS, you're greeted with this kind of menu. So you will need to select uh, which NAS it is, whether or not you're setting up a new one or not. I have two, one's the backup of the primary, and then um, it'll tell you to connect and you'd initiate that install. So Synology actually has a really good video that I had to take a look at a second time, and here's the name, and it basically tells you what you need to know, you know, what's in the box, setting it up, uh, pretty much a lot of what we covered already. And if we fast forward to right about there, Web Assistant, which is what we just logged into, you type in that web address, it's going to be on the NAS and all the paperwork, save that web address. You're going to, we are going to want to make sure to download the latest Web Assistant if you, if you need to. Whoops, we missed that part and you click setup and you enter the information install now just click it it takes about 10 minutes for it to run and it's just as simple as that everything else is going to be uh, setting it up and getting like everything you need set up on your NAS so I again already had this set up so I'm just going over the video so you'd set up a username or uh, server name, whatever you want to call it. I just call it default. The default, the username. Do not just use admin for for goodness sakes. Anything else but just admin. Password. Make sure you set up a strong password. It'll actually tell you if your password strength is weak or strong. Make sure it's strong because you don't want someone hacking into your NAS and taking what whatever data you have on there. Just sanity's sake. I can't iterate that enough. Um, you know, how often you'll updates, you know, you, you would just, uh, go through this basic information. You can set up quick ID, password, confirmations, your regions, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. And then you're all set and then you're into the NAS. Let's get into my own dashboard. Okay. And hand have up. I have two different versions of DSN. On one, I have DSN 6.2.4 with a D or sorry, DSM, I said DSM, my bad. And the other, I have over here, DSM 7.2.1 and some change. So there are some visual differences between it, a little bit different to navigate, specifically in like the storage manager. Well, if I come back over here, sorry, I'm gonna be bouncing around there too. The storage manager just looks a little bit different. Actually, the new one is a lot easier to kind of use once you get used to it. So you got the data scrubbing, the hot spare, the cache, the global settings right in there. Well, in this one, you got the data scrubbing and configuration in there. So if you are using an older or buy a used older um, NAS, you'd be coming in here and you would have the different menus. I actually plan on, after everything is backed up, uh, upgrading my DS1819 to uh, the, the newest version. And then up here, I have my package manager, so I got my different backup schedules. It's currently running. It's been going for, I don't know, four hours, somewhere there's a time ticker, and the progress going on. Coming back over to the DS21, this is the HyperVolt. You can see that the backup is running in there, and it's backing up and storing itself. So it's been going for like five hours. It's only 1% done. It's going to be a, a little, a little while. And uh, where is it over here? So on this, I can get my resource monitor and actually like take a look at how fast things are going. Uh, even though I've got 10 gig networking and it's connected via 10 gig to each other. Well, not to each other through a switch. It's still not operating at 10 gig speed. It's only like 
uh, let's get the current speed. That was a spike, like one megabyte per second. So it's it's pretty slow. Um, but uh, hopefully that's just because this one is optimizing itself in that storage manager we took a look at where it's uh, doing that and that's slowing things down. So I probably should have waited on that, but uh, I got a little impatient, so that was my fault. And while I'm here, how to set up a backup, you just go plus data backup. You get to choose what kind of backup you want. So if you're connected to a USB uh, drive or hub or hard drive, whatever you want it to be, you would come over here to USB, or you could set it up as a um, file folder, single version. But we're doing a NAS, you click on the NAS, click Next, you get the IP address, you would need to type in username and password for that NAS. After that, you would set up what folders you want. So click Next, you choose what kind of backup you want, click Next, and it'll run itself for you. And you can even choose like error correcting and uh, I'll just show you, uh, you know, encryption, um, checksum. I highly recommend uh, checksum right there. Uh, backup rotation. We're not going to hit apply because I don't want it to run. Um, yeah, data check and integrity check. Highly recommend those. It just adds an extra layer of redundancy to prevent um, like bit flips in your hard drive so you have a lower, lower likelihood of ever having data corrupted or lost. There are also all sorts of alternative um, options that you can add to this including hooking this up to an UPS, a UPS unit. So if power is lost, it will automatically shut down the NAS to prevent any data loss in case of that power outage, or you can set a timer on it. Uh, I actually haven't done it to this point, and I plan on doing so. Um, other than that, I think that's everything. All right, I wanted to give a little bit of a few update for how the speeds are going. So it's been running for a couple days now, and the integrity check on the new NAS has finished, so now taking a look at how fast it's going. So it is at 53%, and we can see that it is operating at 200 plus megabytes per second. Now, if I had an SSD caching, I could get speeds faster because it would cache into the SSD first. Same with using uh, the old NAS, the DS1819+. Plus. Uh, so there is some limitation there. It's just functionally with the hard drives, with the way the RAID works, but this is sufficient, and this is why uh, more than regular one gig LAN kind of is an advantage, because it just allows it to operate much faster. The speeds have definitely improved from what they were doing before, which was like 770 megabytes per second, so. So this testing is also in conjuncture with me testing out a couple different um, switches that I bought for this NAS, these NAS is this purpose because my router has two 10 gig ports, but realistically I need like three. Um, so I have a 2.5 and a 10 gig. The 10 gig is better because it gets me the full 320 whatever maximum I can get. The 2.5 will max out at around 250, maybe sometimes 300 megabytes per second. So that is a very real speed loss. Let's unpause that. So 250 versus, or 230, somewhere around there, versus 330. That's a, almost 100 megabytes more per second. That is a lot of extra performance that I'm losing. Almost a third performance by going with a 2.5 gig um, switch. But reliability of that connection matters the most. I use the 10 gig one for the backup a 10 gig for the backup between one NAS and the other and it seemed to do just fine but um, it could have in the background dropped come back dropped come back it's really hard to know so I'm doing long life testing right now with it so, oh so the quality of that connection matters but uh, all in all I'm very happy with the DS21 plus I uh, got tired of waiting for the upgrade and uh, Having a backup of a backup, or backing up my main storage, was important to me. Um, it should be important to you, but whether or not you need a NAS is a matter of convenience. 
I wanted something that could easily back up and set an automated schedule. I didn't want to have to remember to turn it on, do the backups manually, that sort of thing. So this solution was the easiest for me. It may not be the easiest for you because obviously just buying this unit is like a $1,000. Um, it's hard to justify. I don't blame you if you don't want to get it. But if, you, if you're looking for a convenient way to store your data and have it accessible across your home network, Having one of these as your main solution may be good. You can set it up with two redundant drives. Matter of fact, you don't even need to populate all eight, just whatever amount of storage. And as your storage needs grow, you pop in a new hard drive, it'll sync up the drives for you and bing, bada, boom, it's done. Um, I, I'm just on the website here just to show it off while I talk to you all uh, candidly about this because I have thought about building my own NAS uh, multiple times because you can get one for the same price that's more capable or uh, spend a little bit less and have one that's uh, equivalent in capability. But the main uh, thing that held me back was the NAS software and I just really like Synology Hybrid RAID and there didn't seem to be an elegant solution for um, for doing it online. Um, if you do know of that please leave them in the context some sections down below uh it just seemed harder to deal with at this stage in the game um and at that i think i'm going to wrap up this video the performance is what i expect especially without an ssd that might be something i think about adding later on to increase that performance uh other than that, if you got suggestions for videos for me to make uh I'm not going to be testing this sort of thing regularly. This is like a one-time huge purchase. Like it's mine to own. And it's not just testing out hardware. Um, please leave in the comment section down below if you got ways that I can improve my videos. You know, I'm open to that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. I have a Patreon page. I have a Discord server. If you want to talk, chat, whatever questions, happy to answer them. Or you can leave it in the chat. I'm happy to answer there. Uh, becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon really helps grow this channel and make it go a long way in helping fund like the normal experiments, which is my fan testing. Uh, this sort of thing was for me, and I just decided to make a video about it to share with all of you. Uh, and uh, you know, I already said it. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.